Okay, class, I'm just going to continue lecture on part two, just from where we left off in part one. So we're going to move on to the number of solutions of a linear system. So this is going to be very similar to what we saw in section 10.1. So for a system of linear equations exactly one of the following is true. So one, the system has exactly one solution. Two, the system has no solutions. Or three, the system has infinitely many So this is the generalized case for um, linear systems where before we looked at just linear systems of two variables. So it makes sense that that one matches this because um, it was just a little bit more of a specific case of this whole thing. Okay, and then some just notation, a system with no solutions is said to be inconsistent and a system with infinitely many solutions is said to be dependent. Okay, so I'm going to give y'all a sense of how this works just in 3D space because um, we can kind of draw pictures with those. So with the first one, we can kind of imagine if we had some planes and then we took something like this. Where it intersects here. And then we took another plane like this. This will look like this. And so here we have, and oh, oops, I want that to be white. Oh, whoa, my undo button up there is not working. Weird, okay. So here, if you can kind of see, these are three planes that are all intercepting at one point. I know it's kind of hard to see things in 3D, but imagine it's kind of like if you had the axes like this with each plane kind of going like this. I know that's really messy. I tried drawing it a little clearer, but with all of that, it's just the point where all of these planes would intersect. That's our one solution case. And we can generalize that in like more and more dimensions like you could have a system of equations with five variables and while we can't draw a five-dimensional space we can still have a five um, tuple that will be our solution of where they all would intersect value wise 
But graphically, this is kind of what the one solution looks like. And then if we had something like this, okay, let's see. Sorry, these pictures are a little hard to draw. So here, all of these graphs will intersect at this line here. And these planes, they extend um, for kind of forever. So here we would have an infinite solution. They would all um, this all three planes will intercept at this line here, and then we can also have a third case of, and this one's the hardest one for me to draw. So sorry about that in advance. Okay. Oh gosh. S Okay, so I don't know if this is kind of easy to see. It's kind of like if you were to have, I think it's easier for me to draw it like this. If you were to have a little like triangle shape like this. And then we just extended these planes here. Up and forever. They never, all three planes will intersect. Um, the blue and the red one will intersect here. The red and the yellow will intersect here. And the blue and the yellow will intersect here. But there's never a point where all three intersect. So this one will have no solutions. And I'm not the best with drawing these, I'm sorry. But I hope this kind of gives you an intuition for what the three cases are with this theorem. So moving back to actual equations, because those seem to make more sense, at least to me. I've always been bad with pictures, but equations, those make more, more sense. So we're going to look at a system with no solutions. So here is our system, x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1, 2x plus 2y minus z equals 6, and 3x plus 4y minus 3z equals 5, where this is equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. I'm going to keep forgetting. I'm trying to be better with my color coordinating. There we go. So I'm going to, since we've looked at a couple examples of this before, I'm not going to write out all of the steps. I'll just kind of talk through them. So x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. So for this second row, we're going to subtract two of the first row to cancel that to x. So we're going to have, so we're going to subtract two of equation one. So we'll get a zero x and then negative two. So we'll have a negative four plus two y. So that's going to be a negative two y. And then a positive four z added. So plus three z and then subtracting two from six gives us four. And then our third row stays the same. Okay, so now we're going to cancel the x in the third row. 
So an x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. A minus 2y plus 3z equals 4. And now when we subtract 3x, or 3 times the first row from everything, we end up with a 0x. And then it's going to be negative 6y plus 4y. So that gives us a negative 2y. Then we have a, neg a positive 6z plus 3z which gives us a plus 3z. And then negative 3 plus 5, that gives us 2. So we see that we have here, these are, oh wait, this was um, time, or plus, I'm so sorry. This is minus 3 of equation 1. Okay, so here, these uh, second row and third row, they're very similar. So if we were to subtract the second, or the third row from the second, we would end up with an x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1, and negative 2y plus 3z equals 4, and a 0 plus 0 equals negative 2. But 0 does not equal negative 2. So this is inconsistent. Therefore, all right, there's no solution. So um, on the homework, I would recommend uh, redrawing the system and showing your steps. You can, instead of showing all of the work, if you just want to write like you subtracted three of equation one from this equation, um, from that line to get what you currently have, that's fine if you're able to do it in your head. It's also fine if you do small scratch notations on the side and just show your steps from system to system pretty clearly so that I can follow it. All right, now we're going to move on to another example. And this is with infinite solutions. So if we take our system, x minus y plus 5z equals 2, 2x plus y plus 4z equals 2, and 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 8. For this is equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So our first step as always is removing the x terms in the second equation. So we have our x minus y plus 5z equals 2. And then subtracting 2, we get a 0x. Then we're subtracting 2, so with this negative y, it's going to become a positive 2y. Add it to y gives us 3y. And then we have a negative 10z plus 4z gives us 6z. Or, sorry, negative 6z. And then we will have... Oh, sorry, this was supposed to be a negative 2. My bad. Okay. So then our negative 2 times 2 will give us a positive 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. And then our third equation stays the same as of right now. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to try to get rid of our 2x in the third equation. So we get an x minus y plus 5z minus or equals negative 2. We get a 3y minus 6z equals 6. And then we're doing the proper calculations we need of, I'm oh, sorry, this was minus 2. Equation 1. 
this is minus two. Equation one, we end up with six y minus 12 z equals 12. It should be pretty clear here that equation two and equation three are scalar multiples of each other. So we will end up with If we were to subtract two of equation two from this line, we'll end up with a zero plus zero equals zero. So this row of zeros means we have infinite solutions. Oh, let's hope we can get through this video. All right, but we still need to find where the solutions are. So if we were to take our second equation, so we take our 3y minus 6z equals 6, we can divide three out and we end up with y minus two z equals two. And then if we add two z to both sides, we end up with y equals two z plus two. Okay, so now we're gonna plug this y into equation one. So if we were to do that, we have an x minus two plus two z plus five z equals negative two. So then we end up with an x minus two minus two z plus five z equals negative two. If we add two to both sides and combine our z terms, we end up with x plus three z equals zero. So then x equals negative three z. So now we want to solve for um, our solution. But we don't want to use x, y, or x because, or x, y, or z, because those are our variables. We want to put in a different term for that. So we're going to have z equal t, y equal 2 plus 2t, two and x equal negative 3t. So our solution is negative 3t, 2 plus 2t and t. So this is what we mean by dependent. Our solution is dependent upon our choice of t, where t is a real number. And we call t our parameter. All right. So moving on from there, we get to work on a modeling problem. Okay, so we're going to just illustrate all of this with an example on modeling a financial problem. Okay, Oof, this is gonna be a long word problem to write out, so please bear with me. So, Olivia receives an inheritance of $50,000. Her advisor suggests she invests this money in three mutual funds. A money market, which we will call MM, a blue chip stock, fun, 
which we will call BC, and a high-tech stock fund, which we will call HT. All right. The advisor estimates that MM will, oh gosh, I lost it. Um, yes, will re return 5% over the next year. BC will return 9% and high tech will return 16%. Olivia wants a first year return of four thousand dollars to avoid excessive risk she decides to invest three times as much in mm as in high tech. Okay, so the question is, how much should she invest in each fund? So I know that's a very long problem, but so first we need to define our variables. So we're going to let X be the money invested in MM or our money market. We're going to let Y be the money invested in our blue chip stock or BC. We're going to let Z equal the money invested in our tech stock, our high tech stock. Whoops, it should be HT. Okay. And so we know that the total amount of money she has to invest. So if we add X plus Y plus Z, this is gonna be 50,000. We also know that the money market X will return 5%. Our blue chip Y will return 9%. And our high tech stock, which is Z will return 16% and we would like $4,000 from this. And we also know that for everything she invests in our high tech firm, for every $1 that we input, we wanna get $3 out. For We wanna invest $3 in our money market. So that means that this will be our system there. So if we want to simplify, and by simplifying, I basically just mean bringing um, our 3z over and multiplying our second equation by 100 so that we don't have um, these decimal points, our actual system will look like this, where we have x plus y plus z equals 50,000, 5x, plus 9y plus 16z equals 400,000. And then our second equation is x minus 3z equals zero. Okay, where this is equation one, equation two, and equation three. So now we're going to go through solving for the system, just like all of our previous problems.
Okay, so first we're going to eliminate the x term in the second equation. So we get x plus y plus z equals 50,000. <clears throat> 4y plus 11z equals 150,000. And x minus 3z equals 0. Okay. So now we are going to so, um, cancel the x in the third equation. So we're going to end up with x plus y plus z equals 50,000. 4y plus 11z equals 150,000. And then we're going to get y minus 4z equals negative 50,000, and this is from subtracting equation one from our third equation. And now we are going to, did I write that? Okay, sorry, I forgot to write the step. So this is minus five equation one. And then this is minus equation one. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to simplify a bit. Okay. So first, we're going to add four of equation three. Oh, this should be a negative y. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to add equation three or four times equation three up to equation two to cancel out that y. So we're gonna get a minus five z equals negative 50,000. <clears> and then we are going to, we're going to multiply the third equation by negative one just to simplify because everything's negative. So we're gonna get a y plus four z equals 50,000. So this is plus four equation three, and this is times negative one. Okay. And now we're going to switch these two rows here, and we're going to divide um, one of them by five. So we're gonna end up with x plus y plus z equals 50,000. Then we're going to have y plus 4z equals 50,000. And we're going to have z equal, because we're going to divide this one by 5, and it's going to be 10,000. So now we can back solve. We have z equals 10,000. If we plug that into equation two, we have y plus four times 10,000 equals 50,000. So if we subtract this 40,000 um, from both sides, we get y equals 10,000. Now plugging both of these into equation one, we get x plus 10,000 plus 10,000 equals 50,000. And if we subtract 2,000 from both, or 20,000 from both sides, we have x equals 30,000. So now we have that our solution is 30,000, 10,000, 10,000. But we're not done yet. We have to write it as a sentence so that it makes sense to whoever's reading it. So, Olympia should invest $30,000 in the money market fund $10,000 in 
the blue chip stock. And 10,000 in the high tech stock. To yield $4,000 in first year returns. So that is how you can set up and solve a system of equations with more than two variables. Sorry, I had to rush through that last bit a little bit. My Apple Pencil is about to die, and I wanted to try to finish this lecture. All right. Thanks, class. Bye.